Hello, my name is Kyle Casillas, and I will be talking about the background information of the giant snakehead. So, the snakehead in general originated from southern Asia, and its vector or way of transportation into the American waters was by the ballast waters of boats in Asia, or and or um, the people in America dumping their aquariums that contained snakeheads. Um, the giant snakehead... Its, its population has increased in the past couple of years due to it being a top predator. And a top predator is classified as anything that cannot... It, it doesn't worry about dying or getting killed in everyday life. It can just go on doing its business and not have to worry about um, like living the next day just like the little fish have to. And, and um, it can swim very fast in bursts just like the Barracuda, and it gets really tired, so it requires on a stealth, t stealthiness to try to kill its prey, and its prey is usually little fish. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the effects that the giant snakehead has had on the economy and its surroundings. There are many possible effects when an invading species enters an environment where it has no natural predators. One example of a species invading is the Burmese python in the Florida wetlands. The Burmese python due to the fact that it has no natural predators in the Florida wetlands, was able to grow in extreme numbers and become a severe problem in the environment and to the people as well. The giant snakehead presents, along with the danger to the wildlife, an economic danger. Because snakehead fish are an apex predator, they have the ability, and often do, eat every fish that they come in contact with. Eating all the fish in the environment can cause extreme damage to the fragile ecosystem. Additionally, Snakeheads also carry disease called epizootic ulcerative syndrome. This disease is caused by a fungus, which causes red dots to appear on the fish's skin. These spots expand to form ulcers and erosions filled with necrotic tissue. Scientists are working to determine if snakeheads can pass the disease onto fish indigenous to the areas they have invaded. Humans have taken multiple steps to eradicate the snakehead from their environments because of the environmental damage they have caused. One effort having found that a chemical called roetinon has been used to kill the snakeheads, but unfortunately, it will also kill any other fish present in the water. So many efforts are currently underway to eradicate the snakeheads from the environments before they can cause large amounts of damage. One eradication effort in the Chesapeake Bay in 2002 cost the Maryland Department of Natural Resources at least $110,000. In that same year, in October, all 28 snakehead species were formally added by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to the list of injurious wildlife species. This means that all species of snakehead are banned from importation to the United States, with exception for scientific or medical purposes. However, around the same time as the snakeheads were added to the list of injurious wildlife species, there were sightings And now for an overview of the giant snakehead, passing it on to Chris Ayers. Hello there. Now, I'm going to give you some closing remarks on our snakehead presentation. The giant snakehead infestation is a huge problem in the United States, and it needs to be fixed. In order to fix this problem, many organizations have been created solely to dedicate themselves to ridding the United States of this monstrous fish. As mentioned earlier, this fish is a threat to the U.S.'s $3 billion fishing industry. This fish's introduction into our waters was not a conscious one to unleash havoc and tear. However, the only thing resulting from this fish's introduction into our ecosystem has been chaos and terror. The snakehead has no beneficial aspects in our waters. Back in Asia, the local fish have adapted special traits to deal with the snakehead. However, here in the United States, the local fish don't have these adaptations, and the snakehead is able to wreak havoc among the local environments. These snakeheads are a constant annoyance, so much so that 13 states have 
banned possession of live snakeheads. In addition to the banning of the snakehead in 13 states, a lot of the conservative groups in the states have turned towards gassing lakes and other forms of mass eradication of the species. Now, this raises a moral dilemma of whether it's right or not to do such a thing. And our group discussed this. We, we thought it was a very important question, so we talked about it. And we reached the consensus that, yes, it, it is moral. Now, this, this species, it is invasive. So, really, it doesn't belong. Now, if we have to get rid of a few fish to get rid of the snakehead, then overall we think that, in the future, it will be a more beneficial aspect, and it is a good choice. Now, there are conservative groups on both sides, those who side with the snakehead uh, eradications and those who side against it. We fall with those who believe that the snakeheads should be eradicated. Hopefully, we can continue to remove this species from our waters and continue to improve the ecosystem. One program known as the Northern Snakehead Control and Management was established by the Fish and Wildlife Government Program specifically to reduce the amount of snakeheads. With an increase in programs like this, we can eventually rid the country of the snakehead. This program was put together by a large group of both conservative and government officials to try and resolve this issue. Now, they have eight main objectives.